today is Monday and it's a real sweatpants big mug of tea not really starting to work with any kind of brain function until 10 30 in the morning kind of Monday welcome back or welcome for the first time if you're new here my name is Carson I'm a PhD candidate I'm writing a dissertation in early modern English literature my dissertation is four chapters long and I'm currently working on the fourth chapter which is very exciting because it means that I'm almost done with my first draft of my entire dissertation. At the beginning of writing my dissertation, my advisor and I agreed that rather than writing like a perfect complete draft of any of my chapters, I would write a partial decent draft of all of my chapters. So basically I've gotten all of my chapters to like an 80% mark where they're pretty good and there's just still some missing pieces I have to fill in and some like writing I have to polish up. Um, and then once all four chapters are done, I'm gonna go back to the beginning and read through the entire thing. And so being about to finish up my draft of my fourth chapter is exciting because it means that I am almost done with my first draft of my dissertation, but it's also really daunting to think that I'm about to have to read through the entire thing and fix all of, of the issues that I said I would deal with later. Like it's about to be later. <laughs> I've been feeling very stressed at this prospect. I've been feeling really overwhelmed at the amount of work that I have to do and thinking about the timeline to finish my dissertation because I'm hoping, dear God, I'm hoping to defend it in May and that currently feels impossible and the kind of magnitude of the work is really getting on top of me um, and as a result of that I've been avoiding my work, which only makes it worse because that just means that there's more work to do and less time to do it in. It's a whole mess, but it's a new week of a new year and a new opportunity to dig into the work that I do enjoy. I enjoy the work. I enjoy the research. I am lucky to be able to do this kind of research. I do not have to do a lot of work this week. I get to do a lot of work this week and it's going to be great. If I keep on saying it, maybe I'll believe it and it'll be true. Anyway, I thought I would make a vlog of this entire week of work and document kind of what my process is like trying to get a rough draft of a chapter to a more completed draft that I can send to my advisor. And also I'm thinking that making this vlog might help me hold myself accountable and not get distracted by the things I want to do, like cooking stews and watching Lord of the Rings and writing a romance novel. That would be so much more fun. Right now, it's Monday morning. I am very lucky to be able to work from home in a deeply cozy home. My partner just made a fire, so I'm gonna go sit by the fireplace, reread this draft, and figure out what the main items to fix are going to be. In my heart of hearts, I'm, I'm honestly not feeling very optimistic, but I am feeling determined, and that is more important. I'm gonna get a lot of work done today.
the work that I got done today, I would say in technical academic terms was bad. <laughs> I had taken all of last week off for holidays and so I was really trying to get back into the mindset of a person who writes and has ideas that make sense um, and it didn't go smoothly, I would say. I was having a really hard time making sense of things that I had already written. It wasn't, it wasn't a very productive day. Uh, it was a day that made me feel more discouraged than motivated. That is fine. Sometimes you have those kinds of days. And tomorrow is a new day. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'm just gonna pick this back up again tomorrow. For right now, I'm just gonna have my glass of white wine and possibly another glass of white wine and I'm going to do things that have absolutely nothing to do with my dis- sat down and I made a list of the things that I wanted to do and I looked at my schedule. I even opened up my draft document a bunch and stared at it and kind of waited for the brilliant ideas to happen. I thought about the things that I needed to do. I thought a lot about how much I needed to do and how little I was doing and then it just kind of like snowballed into this little doom spiral where I just couldn't bring myself to work on my dissertation. But the good thing that did happen yesterday is that when it got to be like 8.30 at night and I hadn't done any work and I couldn't bring myself also to cook anything because that takes so much time and also then there would be dishes to do, I went to this place down the street that I go to all the time. And because I go there all the time, after I ate my chicken fingers and burger, they offered me this free Biscoff donut. And so now it's a new day. I have a donut for my sugar supply. I have a can of Diet Coke already open and I'm drinking my double shot iced latte. I started off my day by making like a tiny bit of a schedule, but also just giving myself two things to do, basically two sections of the chapter to work on. And they are sections that I know will be relatively easy. I just jumped right in with doing some rewriting and expanding in my section on The Tempest, which is a play that I am very familiar with so I don't have to use my brain all that much. It's all kind of in there and I just need to organize it. And so I've written like a page and a half already this morning and that feels like a good note to start the day on. And it's already a page and a half more than I got in the entire day of work yesterday. I'm trying not to get too defeatist but I also think it's important to be realistic. I just am not in a like motivated state. I'm not feeling good about the work that I'm putting out. I'm not feeling good about like my capacity to uh, produce anything of quality. Um, but that is just where I'm at and I have to work through that anyway. And so I started off on a good note with doing some writing and now I'm just going to give myself as much structure as possible and so I'm going to do a couple of Pomodoro sessions. I'm gonna do that for about an hour and see how it goes. Thank you. 
my plan for this video was that it was going to be a vlog about how I kind of schedule my week of revision and and what the like mundane details of writing a dissertation chapter looks like and it turns out instead this is a vlog about me really fighting against writer's block and not always winning that fight. I already knew on Monday that I was feeling a bit blocked but I was planning on kind of pushing through it but the thing about pushing through writer's block is that it's not always a straightforward linear progression of things getting better one step at a time. I got a little bit of work done on Monday but it wasn't very good quality. I got literally nothing done on Tuesday and felt like absolute shit about that. Then yesterday, Wednesday, I made some honestly decent headway and now Thursday we'll see what happens. But as I am kind of trying to push through this writer's block, there are three kind of go-to strategies that I am using that are working. Not 100% of the time, but for the most part. The first one and kind of the biggest one is that I just sit down to work when I was planning on working, no matter what. And that doesn't always mean that work gets done. It certainly doesn't always mean that good work gets done. Tuesday, I just completely couldn't do it. Monday, the work that I did was not my best, but just sitting down every day that I had planned as a writing day to write still helps me with that structure. The second thing that always helps me is using that Pomodoro method. 25 minutes on, where for that entire 25 minutes I cannot do anything but focus on my document, can't look at my phone, can't open up other browser windows, and sometimes I'm just staring at my document, but mostly I'm, I'm writing and having that focus time helps me. 25 minutes on of that and then 10 minutes off to do something else. And another thing that's been working these past couple days is you can kind of see behind me that I have a split screen up on my monitor with two different Word documents open. And so I have my whole big 30 page rough draft document open on one side, but then on the other side, I have a document where I am actually like retyping and making edits and fucking around with that document, excuse me, messing around with that document gotta be more professional. And that helps me for a couple reasons. Number one is that I'm not actually making changes in the document. Everything is still there if I wanna go back and revert to the way it was. And it's also helping me because the 30 page document is big and scary and scrolling through it, I can get lost and I just feel overwhelmed. So having just one dedicated workspace where as soon as I have fixed a paragraph, I then replace it in the original draft document is really helping me out. Although I will also say I have copies of every version of every draft saved on an online location because I am very afraid of losing any of my work and very afraid that it's going to turn out that something I said in my second draft is better than something I said in my fourth draft. So I've got all backups, but still, it's just kind of helping me mentally focus in on something that looks cleaner and easier to approach. So I'm going to use all of those three strategies right now. I'm going to sit down at my computer to write even though I don't feel like writing. I'm going to set a 25 minute timer and use that Pomodoro method to focus in. And I'm going to be toggling between my two documents, the full draft and the workspace one, and doing my best.
good thing about working alone from home, basically just self-directed, is that I can work more or less whenever I want to. I can make my own schedule. I do follow a pretty conventional schedule most of the time of working Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. But sometimes, if for example, I go out for dinner on Thursday night and then end up having a few cocktails, and because I'm almost 30, having multiple kinds of liquor and sugar in my body gives me a horrible headache the next day, I can decide to take Friday as a day off and instead work on Saturday. So now it's Saturday and I'm gonna do a work day. I wanted to be like a productivity vlogger, like academic structure and stuff, but I don't have structure and I'm not productive. So this is just, this is just what being a PhD candidate looks like sometimes. In these past days of working, I have at least been able to get a like new perspective on the stronger parts of my chapter as opposed to the weaker parts of it. And right now I know that one of the big weak points is that there is kind of a hole in the end of the chapter where I need some research. I need some more specific sources and hard data. And I don't have that right now, and I don't want to do that research. So I'm not going to do it today. Today I'm going to focus on cleaning up some of the sections of writing. And then next week I'm going to really, for the whole week, kind of dig into filling in the gaps in my research. I can't put off the parts that I don't want to do forever, but I can at least put them off for one more day. Okay. Sunday, but of the following week, partly because it turns out my creative block kind of also extended to making and editing a video, but partly because I broke through to the other side of the writer's block and I've spent the past week really solidly working to the point that on Friday I submitted my dissertation chapter to my advisor. And the whole week of work that I documented in this video was pretty touch and go. It was not all smooth sailing. It was not all super productive, but that is just kind of part of the process. It's a necessary stage to go through, I think. I needed to use all of those writing strategies. I needed to sit down to work even when I didn't really feel like it. I needed to use the Pomodoro to give myself structure. I needed to use my blank editing document as a way to kind of like clear my mind and focus in on an individual part of the chapter at a time. I, I don't think I could have broken through the writer's block without kind of going through that messy work week of just desperately trying to stick to those strategies and working through it the best I could. But ultimately what really broke me through my writer's block in the most satisfying way was that this past week, early in the week, I just went to a cafe where I had basically no Wi-Fi and I just sat down and worked for like four hours. Maybe I could have just jumped straight to the sitting down at a cafe and locking myself in with my thoughts, but I don't know. I sometimes think that I need that rough work week of just kind of like struggling through in order to get to the point where I'm capable of breaking through the writer's block. This was the worst period of writer's block and my lowest period of motivation in the entirety of my time working on the dissertation so far. Um, I started writing my dissertation on February 3rd of last year. So it's been almost exactly a year that I have been 
working on the writing part. I've been researching this project for like four years, but the writing, you know, sitting down and opening up a document entitled Chapter One happened almost exactly a year ago. And so I think it makes a lot of sense that this is when I started to really burn out and get lower motivation and lower kind of morale around the writing project. And it's just important, I think, to acknowledge that those things happen in a long-term writing project and that it's okay and it's unavoidable and it's just what you have to work through. During that whole week that I was documenting, I did feel pretty bad about my writing and I think it's good to just kind of lean into that. You know, you saw me in this video saying that my morale was low and that I didn't really like the writing that I was doing. Um, and off camera I complained a lot about how I felt stupid and I felt unmotivated and all those kinds of things. I think it's good to just vent and get that out of your system and that helps avoid kind of internalizing it and bottling it up um, and actually feeling defeated by the writer's block. I give myself permission to be a bad writer sometimes, to be unmotivated sometimes, and then I am able to kind of feel those feelings, feel bad, write badly, and then push through it and come out on the other side. And I am on the other side now. Having submitted this chapter means that now I have a complete first draft of my dissertation, which is really exciting. And I'm also trying not to get too stressed about the part that comes next, which is all the editing and dealing with all of the issues that so far I've been able to tell myself are a problem for future me. I'm about to be future me, so it's about to be my problem but this is like a milestone in my writing process, my dissertation process, and that's really exciting. This video ended up kind of summing up what a lot of dissertating has been like for me, which is that there's some low points, but then there's a lot of work that feels at first not very good, but then you hit your stride, you get some momentum, you get some positive energy, and then you hit a milestone and it's very exciting. This was the worst writer's block I've had, but it's not the first time and I know that it won't be the last. So please let me know in the comments what your strategies are for overcoming writer's block because it's inevitable that it'll happen again, but when it does happen, I'll get through it.